Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe to Car Mag for the latest in content, as well as Cape Town, etc. Uh, with a surfing legend in South Africa, a man who I've known for a number of years, and uh, he calls Cape Town his home, former South African surfing pro Seth Hulley, uh, who spends his time now as the man responsible for marketing in Southern Africa uh, for the brand Oakley. Seth, lovely to chat to you, brother. Good to be here, Rock. Oh man, listen, first of all, of all the places, and you've traveled the world, right? You choose Cape Town as home. You love this place. Yeah, you know, I grew up in Amschlonga Rocks yeah. and um, it's a perfect beachside city. You don't have to drive too far, just put the board shorts on and jump in the ocean. Coming to Cape Town was a big adjustment, but hey, you know, with a city with this type of lifestyle, what more could you ask for? There's so much to do in Cape Town. It's just such a great place to bring a family up, you know. Yeah. So, and I've had to make the adjustment to colder water. Cold, I was going to say, colder but, uh, water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't uh, scare you. You still get up any day of the mm. week and go out there and, and surf. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, if it's in your blood, um, it's in your blood. You want to go, yeah. when, once you're in the water, you start to warm up after a couple of minutes yeah. in your wetsuit and, and you start to get into it, you start to get loose and flexible and, you, and you're off. Yeah. This man's taught me so much. In actual fact, the reason why I can get up and get on a surfboard is thanks to this man <laughs> and his incredible coaching abilities. I'm not the only person. Uh, Brian Abana, Sebele Sinatla, all the rugby stars and cricket stars have learned to surf via this gentleman over here. But uh, there's a long-term vehicle that's behind Seth over here, and this is the Ford Ranger Raptor. Uh, this Raptor is a special, as you can see, it spent a lot of time off-road, but this is the perfect, if I could find the perfect surface car, Seth, this would be it. It's a family car, so you've got the double cab ca uh, 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 capacity, you've got s uh, seating behind the, the front seats, obviously for the family, and then generous uh, bucky space behind that for surfboards and, and, and. Amazing off-road stuff as well. Amazing off-road, amazing get vehicle. Get surf spots that are out of the way. Spot on. You're going to hop behind the wheel. You're going to find out more about your life growing up, your love and passion for the ocean. And then, of course, your responsibilities now as the main man in charge of Oakley. Let's hop in the, the van and go. Seth, lucky to be in the car with you, mate. Uh, and here we go. We're off. Nice, comfortable space to be behind the wheel of this Raptor. It's uh, pretty much like uh, any kind of a, you know, sedan inside. It's, it's super comfortable. Yeah, it feels uh, that 4x4 four four type of feeling, feel higher than everyone else. You can yeah. see over all the cars, you feel safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's talk about life growing up in Durban. You obviously grew up near the water. You were a water baby. Now, not everybody is a water baby. I'm definitely not a water baby, uh, mainly now because I can't float. Uh, but but growing <laughs> up, you you love the water, you love for the ocean. Did, it, did that come from, from a, a particular family member? Or where, did, where does that passion for no, the ocean No, funny, come? I was actually born in Zimbabwe and uh, moved to the coast um, when I was uh, five years old. Yeah. And and um, my mom and dad actually, we moved right onto the beach in Amschlange. And my dad is actually a musician. He's come from a musical yes. background. And um, he was part of the start of the music revolution in the 60s. And they did the world tour. They did the UK, Germany, went over to Australia. That's why one sister was born in the UK. The other one was born in Australia because my mom traveled with them. And I was born in Zimbabwe. So my dad was part of that whole revolution. Your dad was <coughs> a South African, or never mind a South African, a global rock star i mean he performed and he was mates with the rolling stones the, the birds beatles, the, the beatles. beatles yeah and he knew them and they knew him yeah it, it, it was like i said it was sort of the music revolution and they went over to the uk and they were called the diamonds and then they had to yes. change the name to the rhodesians and the strangers in between because they were a bit of a loss for name because it was a conflicting interest of another man over there yes. and they started to mingle with the Beatles and the, and the Rolling Stones and then back then and they actually got the rights to one of the Beatles songs and unfortunately it was one of the songs that didn't pan out but I yep. mean and but their manager obviously got, put them in touch and with in, in the industry and they met with the, the Beatles manager and that's how it evolved from then and then one after that um, they actually had a whole lot of stories. I mean, they 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 opened for the Storyville nightclub in Cologne when that when that nightclub opened, and then also like the the Animal Song, House of the Rising, Rising Sun. Sun. I mean, the, the, every time I the hear that song, I think of my dad because they, my dad's band yeah. lent in the equipment to Absolutely. record that song. So that guitar that's playing there was more than likely guitar your dad was your, your dad's True. guitar. He played the rhythm guitars and vocals, my dad. Yeah. Jeez. So, oh. Yeah, it's always an adjustment getting which one the, the indicator is and which one the uh, you know exactly. the wind speed might be. Yeah. Yeah, so a musical cool. background, did it rub off on you, uh, you and your siblings? Were, were there, was there like any musical talent in the family? Hey, my dad, I, I always asked him to t teach me a couple of uh, chords and he just told me I don't have an ear for music. I, I just think he was a bad teacher. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Zimbabwe, you moved to Durban, you find yeah. yourself, uh, you know, loving, loving, the, I still want to find out about that love for the surf. Where so, did that start? 
when I got to the beach, I used to love being on the beach and I looked at the ocean yeah. and just riding those waves looked, looked amazing to me. You yes. know, and like yeah. I said, my parents, like, they loved the beach, but they didn't know about riding waves, you know. So yeah. my mom was actually grew up in Durban, but um, she moved obviously to Zimbabwe with my, and moved along with my dad. Yes. And um, so they bought me a boogie board first off at six years old and yeah. then I wanted to start standing. I was trying to stand on the boogie board and then they bought me a surfboard and that's where it all started, you know, and living on the beach in, in Umschlange, it's, it wasn't oh. a bad, <laughs> no better place to put on your board shorts and jump in the ocean. You, know, you don't have to drive anywhere and I spent hours in the ocean, hours yeah. and hours in the ocean. Of course, that was like almost, I uh, think of a golden era for South African surfing. I mean, at the moment, South African surfing is, is booming again. Um, but there was this time when we were, we had massive competitions. Uh, I'm thinking of like the Gunston 500s. Uh, there, there, it was really this big, massive events that were in South Africa and you were on the stage with the world's great, uh, greats. So yeah, so through my high school era, um, my parents moved to the Durban beachfront out of Mshlonga because that's where we were training all the time. Yeah. We actually had a good crew of youngsters coming through um, in my era, you know, like Jason Ribbink and, you know, the names go on. We had a, we, so there was a fiercely competitive environment in the yes. juniors in Natal surfing. Um, we dominated a, a lot of the, uh, the surf scene at the South African Surf Champs and that. And then having the Gunston 500 um, come around each year and putting putting yourself against the world's best there was a great platform to um to to, to kind of show your stuff yeah to show your stuff exactly and, and to and win to it and to test yourself you know so <laughs> yeah so it was amazing um how we had this opportunity with the guns and me around which we all lived for because yeah. we wanted to see the world's best and then also compete against them and see how you could go as a as a youngster coming through um and after my high school year, my first year in high school, I won a SA Pro Junior that qualified me for the World Pro Junior at Bells Beach. And I went over to the World Pro Junior and I ended up winning the World Pro Junior at Bells, the Ripco World Junior. <laughs> so that kind of set me off straight out, out, out of school. Yeah. I picked up Town & Country as an international sponsor then and um, things were, were kicked, had, kicked off to a good start. Boom. And then, and then you kind of got to see the world. You were on the world uh, uh, circuit. You got to, you know, uh, there was a young Kelly Slater that was uh, at that stage also just starting his journey into the world of surf. Uh, and, and the world's finest, you you, you know, competing with, with the best in the world. Um, this incredible career that could have, again, seen you settle anywhere in terms of being based out of anywhere. And I remember when you and I first met, you were based in Australia. We were corresponding via email about 20 odd years ago. You were working for Oakley in Australia because you'd kind of just come out of professional surfing and you were posted for Oakley in Australia. Yeah, so when it, how it actually happened is that I actually I got sponsored by Oakley in Australia when I won that World Junior yes. when I was 18. So I picked up the sponsorship in, in Australia. Later that year, Oakley came to South Africa um, under distribution. Yeah. And then, um, so my career, it was 92 to 95 were great years, you know, yes. and I, I was performing at, at the top level with no distractions and unfortunately 96 came along with a couple of distractions in my life and it caused me to um, lose a bit of focus of, on my surfing. So I lost Town & Country as a major sponsor, then I was sponsored by, um, I picked up another sponsor being paid in Rand, so I was, uh, uh, it, it was I was having to subsidize my prize Got money you. so I was chasing the tour yes. so those 95 year was the year that I almost qualified for the WCT I missed it by one place but I had won three WQS events that year one Got of you. them being the Billabong yes and um, I thought 96 would come along and I was confident that I'd, just, I'd, I'd work hard but I'd qualify for the CT but yes. Having these distractions come into my life, I dropped a few places down and I realized I've got some work to do. Um, and then obviously, of chasing the tour still, chasing um, points and that, and subsidizing it with my prize money. Sure. And the rand getting weak against the dollar, well, I, yeah. was, I was thought, okay, well, Listen, I'm a yeah. hamster on a treadmill here. Um, yeah. Let me try and look into it. I mean, I, I was fortunate that uh, I got a job offer from Oakley. So yes. I started working for them in 2001 in sports marketing, looking yes. after action sports. And then in 2008, they offered me a job in Australia. I went there for two years, came back in 2010. And that's obviously when yours and my relationship started yeah. off. Yeah. I, now I recall even earlier than that. I recall in the mid in the mid two thousands somewhere because by two thousand and eight I'd already moved and begun elsewhere, and I was at the SABC. And my golden years at the SABC were the early noughties, the two thousand and one <laughs> till two thousand and five six. So it was somewhere in that window period when I was at the SABC that you and I started started like just corresponding yeah, via, via mail. Your memories um, going mine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 
and, 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 and now you're, you're, you're based out of like I said Cape Town and I keep driving the, 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 the fact home that we've got incredible people that call Cape Town a home uh, because you've lived everywhere almost and, and you, you know you know that your job allows you to live almost anywhere you want to but you choose Cape Town and again for those points that we made when we started this video this is home to you your family you know feel at home here the Cape Town offers you everything yeah I mean you know like it was a big adjustment moving here um, from the, the warmer climes of Durban and the waters and, and less driving and you yeah. know just I, I still don't like to drive to go find waves I like to just show up at the beach and go surfing so it was a big adjustment from that perspective but saying that when I when I bring a family up here and especially in the northern suburbs of Cape Town it's such a beautiful yes. environment you yeah. know it's a, yeah. really it's ch it's a chilled environment and you know, there's so much to do in Cape Town. Cape Town's like five cities in one. You know, yeah, the, the tourists yeah. come here. My managers have just been here of late. You know, there's just so much to show them. You actually don't know where to go first. You're up Table Mountain, Lion's Head, uh, Landudno, you know, all over the place. So it's, there's so much to do and so much to see. But it's, it's such an amazing city as well. And that's yeah. why bringing kids up here, it offers all those good things, you know. And yeah, the Western Cape is a beautiful place to live. I mean, yeah, wine, wine farms and you name it, you know. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about, about your role with Oakley because, you know, we are a sport mad nation. We all know that it goes without saying. But finding the right um, um, kind of a mix of athlete that suits the brand. And by mix, I mean across the entire board from cricket, rugby, soccer, the, the massive hub of sporting stars and future stars we have. It must be a tough job trying to find out and trying to find a balance because obviously if you had endless budget everyone would be with Oakley um, but you know unfortunately you you're limited in terms of that budget and also as to in terms of where, where you're gonna spend it well the thing is exactly you, you're looking for those the cream of the crop those rising stars that that's someone that's got a bit of a life story as well to yeah. them you know and um, you know so key athletes a guy like who's, who's currently one of our iconic athletes um, right now is Sia Kulisi, you know, he's, yeah. he's, a, he's, 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 he's a sporting resonance, is, is yeah. the best of the best. Absolutely. He's a World Cup winning rugby captain. Yeah. He's got an amazing life story. And, you know, these are the type of athletes that you, you're coming to Oakley. I mean, Oakley sponsors you and we love the fact that we got the best on the books, but then also sure. have a story around being Absolutely. the best, you know. Yeah. And also very youth target I mean targeting youth and sports these days sure. as well because yeah. you know, the, the brand it's a core brand it's um, Absolutely. yeah it's got its niche in that as well and that's why we, we end up targeting the youth coming through and, and those are the guys that you know will move with us going forward and move the needle you know I love the fact that um, Oakley have been very clever in in catching on to sport that is um, is kind of a exploded onto the scene 10 years ago eSport wasn't maybe as big as it is now but it's massive now and Oakley have got product based for uh, uh, suitable for for eSports I love that you've kind of evolved with the times and you've kept with um, you know the, the 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 next generation of sporting talent whether it be physical out there sport or, or eSport well the thing is which is know, also physical uh, but you know what I mean 100% I mean and those eSports guys to 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 keep their mind fresh and that the guys are training also now it's not just guys sitting behind the computer all the time but the thing is a third of the world's population are gaming so yeah. <laughs> you, you're gonna have to get <laughs> amongst it market. to be yeah it's a massive massive market you're gonna have to get amongst it to uh you know it's it's uh, and that's why we we, are, we are identified that it's it's massive uh, revenue um a ma 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 massive category for driving revenue Absolutely. and that's why we decided to go into the to the gaming prism gaming lenses and you know which which is a it's a great plus because those prism gaming lenses they the that it helps with the blue light reflecting off the computer screen yes. and, and, and allows the gamers to be feel more relaxed so their eyes feel more relaxed for a longer period of time and not feel the, the intense stress on the eyes you know yes. so so it's an amazing piece but like i said we identify key categories and especially it's a uh, youth youth inspired gaming you know because all the youngsters they love a they love a, a, a iphone or a smartphone absolutely and uh, it's um and it, it, it seems to be moving the needle really well into a yeah. big space for us at Oakley. Absolutely. Um, looking back at your career, who was the toughest opponent that you came up against? It? Well, you In know, order. it's you know Kelly's Kelly. I mean, you know, he's yeah, he's the yeah, greatest yeah. of all time. And yeah. you know, starting out, I mean, he has this has this aura about him that I think uh, a lot of times he, he, you know, when just battling out in a heat against Kelly, I just think you know, you just. <laughs> Your chances 
are slim, but you're just going to give it your best shot. And sure. I think that's, uh, you just got to go out there. Like I tell also kids, you know, you don't know how your opponent wakes up in the day. You don't know if he, he's, he didn't sleep so well the night before. He's yeah. not feeling, so you've got to always give it your best shot and never let the person beat you. But, um, and let you beat you in mentally, your head yeah, mentally yeah. before you fell out. Yeah. And you've got to go there and you've got to do what you can in control of and yeah. what you can do best. You know I what I'm saying? That. And then that's why I always try and pass on to any athletes, yeah. whether it's a surfer or any of the other athletes, just go out there, play your game and do what you love. Because if you're doing what you love, the best is going to come out of you, you know, and sure, be I positive, that. you know. I love that. And um, yeah, going back to, so, yeah, Kelly was a guy who was just, a, he's the beast, you know. He's, yeah. just, he, uh, he's such a phenomenal surfer. He's so good to watch. He's changed the face of surfing. Yeah, he's a machine, you know. So him, he will be on the list. And you've got these amazing relationships, obviously, with the, the surfing fraternities. It's like a big family, hey? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like being part of, like, that's why I love what I do at Oakley. I mean, you, you're still involved with the sport of surf plus other sports. Yeah. Um, and, you, and surf is your passion, you know. So, so being involved with surfing um, and being in that scene still and seeing all the faces, the, seeing the people come and people go and the people of your generation are now like coaches or judges or part of the organization. Sure. It's so good to show up these events and it feels like you're back at home when, you, when, you, when you're mingling with these people, yeah. you know, still. So it's, it's, it's an awesome environment. And, these, and as, the, as World Surfing's... Um, as it's transformed and yeah, and you know, evolved and, and grown and, and like you blossomed. say, they become yeah. like a family. You know, Absolutely. it's a whole the, the CT surfers, the men, the women. Yeah. they're all just like a traveling group of family. You know, although there's like fierce competitiveness within yes. them, I mean, they still you know great great people. You know. I love it. Uh, Seth, finally, what are your thoughts on this, uh, this long term? This has been with the car fleet for a while now, uh, in the car fleet for a while, and uh, we kind of use this for everything. And I thought this vehicle kind of was an epitome of, of you and your life. Uh, it's the kind of car you can hop in. I know that there is an actual fact. One of these vehicles is, is the official Oakley vehicle that you've bought, and it's not here, it's, it's on the road. Sure. Um, well, what, what is your thought and your take on this Raptor? It's always been one of my dreams to own a vehicle like this, you know. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's so comfortable. You can feel like you could get to certain destinations that other normal sedans couldn't get you to. Yes. And for someone like who's got a passion for the sport of surf and you want to get to out of the way places, uh, breaks that aren't as crowded and that as well, I think a car like this would be ideal. You know, it's like yeah. it's got the power, it's got the comfort, and you know, it's got the space. I love it. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the conversation. Thanks for sharing about your life journey with us. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's lekker to have you in Cape Town because you're five minutes away for a cup of coffee. I uh, appreciate your friendship. I love the fact that you, what you see is what you get. Um, and you're a real genuine kind of a guy. And I think that uh, to the world of sports, especially when people don't know some of the greats of, of sports that we don't often have a focus on in South Africa. We didn't really have a magnifying glass on surf in the 80s and 90s because, you know, we were coming through isolation and we were focused on our core sports being rugby and cricket and, and those sports but you know in the background there was a youngster out of Durban that was flying the flag high for South Africa on the surf scene during a very vital part of South Africa's transition. Rock, it's, it's uh, special times and uh, thanks for having me on the show here and um, it's a privilege to call you one of my good mates as well. Lekker yeah. everybody, like, subscribe, click the buttons, you know what to do and we'll be back, we'll be back with some more great content on Car Magazine. Oh, <laughs> my